Hey everyone, it's Brendan Payne again, and I wanted to do a quick video today to show you or to give you some insight on what earnest money is when it comes to a contract. I get this question all the time and there's a lot of misunderstandings. It's better to find out ahead of time until you get before you get into a scenario where you know maybe the earnest money's on the line or you're expecting to get earnest money if you're a seller and your your, your transaction fell through. So let's talk first about what is earnest money. Earnest money is, is essentially just something of value, typically cash or the promise of cash, that goes along with a contract. So every contract to be um, a legal contract has to be giving something of value before the actual closing where the whole transaction takes place. Okay, there's probably some legal terms in there, but it's basically something of value that goes along with a contract. Typically, it's in the contract, South Carolina contracts. It's written in there on how much they're putting it, putting down for earnest money, where it's being held, and how is it being received. So is it a check? Is it cash or something else? Okay. The other part of that is very, very important if you are a seller is to make sure, and the agents understand this and they should know this, that um, if that earnest money hasn't physically been received, so you've got an out-of-state buyer, they left town and they have not sent that check back yet, then nobody should be signing as having received it because nobody's received it. Okay, very important part of it. So it's essentially value that goes along with the contract that shows that you're serious. Okay, why is it important? It's important because it does show, one, it, it makes it a valid contract, but two, it shows that that person has got some, quote, skin in the game for the transaction. Now, there's no steadfast rule that says it has to be a certain amount. I know some people have come to our market and been surprised when they saw that, you know, maybe somebody put up a, a less than 1% or maybe $1,000 for an earnest money check on maybe a $300,000 property. They can put anything they want in terms of the buyer. You can offer anything you want, but the seller has the right to go back and you know possibly ask for more. It's really a negotiating point, okay? But there has to be something to introduce the contract with some form of earnest money there. Now, third question is, what happens to it? Let's assume that the trans transaction goes through, everything's fine. That earnest money, once it's deposited and it says who it goes to, what escrow account it goes to in the contract, then it sits there until closing. At closing, unless something else has been agreed upon, that money goes towards the buyer's closing proceeds or closing costs that they're, that they're purchasing the property with. Okay? If for some reason there's a dispute, if the contract falls through, there's a lot of different things that can happen. If the contract falls through for a contingency, so just assume that it's a financing contingency, then the financing contingency typically would mean that the earnest money is is going back to the is going back to the buyer. If it's a different contingency, it could mean that it's going back to the buyer. There's multiple things where this is where the confusion comes in a lot of times in and sellers may not understand that if the deal falls through, it doesn't automatically mean that they're getting the earnest money, nor do they have any right to it. Typically, contingencies in the contract are going to call for the money, the earnest money to go back to the buyer if it's a legitimate contingency. It's really there so that a buyer just doesn't decide to change their mind. And what it essentially comes down to is if there's a dispute and people can't agree, the deal falls through, buyer and seller can't agree on where the earnest money should go. So it gets released to the buyer and the seller says no, or the, you know, vice versa. At that point, if they can't agree, then there's a process where one of the brokers has to go file with the magistrate here local. It's basically like small claims court. And then the magistrate looks at all the information, all the facts, and then makes a decision on where that earnest money goes. So hopefully this will help you understand kind of the process and keep you from, from any misunderstandings before you do your next transaction.